the rising tide of plastic represents a major threat to Canada's environment. A University of Ottawa startup is turning this plastic problem into an opportunity for communities across the country. This week, we're going to hear from Polly about its small-scale cycling solution. This week on Techopia Live. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Techopia Live. I am your host, Craig Lord, the editor here at Techopia. And we are back in the University of Ottawa's STEM building, uh, where the Faculty of Engineering lives, one of our great sponsors for Techopia. Uh, firstly, uh, for today's show, I want to introduce you to our guest from the University of Ottawa, uh, Media Shikasan. You are the program manager at Maker Launch. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, your role at the university? Hello, Greg. Uh, my name is Media, and I am the program manager for Maker Launch. I look into building the program content and also the experience and the support for teams um, who will be part of the program. Mm -hmm. And it's great to have you here. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about Maker Launch in a little while. But first, uh, I want to introduce us to uh, Holly Todd. You are the co-founder of Poly, uh, a small-scale plastic recycling solution. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what Poly is doing and how it's trying to make a difference uh, on this massive problem of plastic waste? Absolutely. Um, so as you mentioned, we're a social enterprise that manufactures small-scale plastic recycling machines that essentially allow people to recycle plastic without the need for expensive municipal recycling infrastructure. Um, so what our systems entail um, is a shredder machine that, shre that shreds plastic down into little pieces and then an injection molder that takes those shredded pieces, melts them down, and shapes them into new products using interchangeable molds. And the whole goal of our business is to enable individuals to use our infrastructure to create businesses selling the products that they're able to make, allowing them to monetize plastic waste in their community and hopefully make a difference in the amount of waste that's produced. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe give us a little bit of an example. Uh, what are the things, uh, you, maybe uh, the, the, the plastic frames for glasses, that kind of thing. Uh, what have you made so far what, with these machines and where are you seeing traction? What kind of communities uh, are going to be using these, these machines? Sure. Um, we actually launched our very own poly workshop here in Ottawa about four months ago. The theory being that we couldn't very well um, encourage operators to operate systems in places across Canada if we didn't know how to operate them ourselves. Um, so we've been making a variety of products. We actually started with something super simple. We made um, coasters that we sold in the Christmas season. Um, and we've since transitioned to experimenting with doing backsplash tiles. Um, and one of our flagship products that we're launching in the next few months is actually eyeglass frames. Um, so that's been super exciting to work on. And the designing for the mold um, has been challenging, but also a really cool opportunity for us to work on something that we think is really impactful. Um, Beyond our Ottawa workshop, we actually have confirmed two pilot clients who will be operating our systems in cities across Canada in the summer. Um, our first being an individual in St. John, New Brunswick. Um, so what's interesting there is that it's a coastal community, um, meaning that we, we're able to access um, the Atlantic coast of Canada um, and see if we could potentially make a difference in some of the beach plastic that washes up or actually removing plastic from the waterways. Um, so it poses a really cool R&D opportunity for us. Um, and then the other community that we have confirmed is Iqaluit, Nunavut. Um, so we're actually sending a system to a school up there um, that'll start running in the fall. Um, it's a really cool opportunity for us to actually introduce plastic recycling into a community that doesn't have it currently um, and experiment with how it can make an impact in these northern communities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, very interesting to see how, uh, I mean, we've heard a lot about oceans uh, when it comes to plastic waste. Uh, there was a huge campaign a few months back about reducing plastic straws uh, that just end up in the oceans with all the other plastic waste we're just throwing away. So uh, maybe with that New Brunswick uh, pilot, uh, a chance to make a difference in those communities uh, and, and improve the health of our oceans. Um, and, and so yeah, maybe we'll pass it to uh, Media for, for a quick question about how the university is actually getting involved with uh, Poly. So I do know building such a startup with the scale, you would need both support in the business aspect, but also in design manufacturing. So I'm just interested to know about uh, what services and programs have you leveraged at the university to help you build and scale and launch your business? 
So we use a lot of facilities at the university, um, both from the Telfer School of Management as well as the Faculty of Engineering. So we're a part of a student group called Enactus that encourages students to create their own social enterprises to address different issues across Canada. So we've been able to benefit a lot from the support from Enactus, both from the faculty um, as well as just um, the programming that we've been able to access being part of this program. Um, We've also been able to access a lot of the facilities that are located here at the STEM building. So we used the Brunsfield Center um, and the Ottawa Machine Shop to manufacture a lot of the parts for our machines. Um, we're a participant in a lot of the activities that run out of the eHub. We've been able to participate in pitch competitions throughout the year. Um, and last summer, we actually participated in the Startup Garage program, which provided us with a lot of mentorship and supports for our business um, at a really key point when we were prototyping and really understanding how to create an effective business model. So we've gotten a lot of support from the university and been able to access a lot of these different services. Um, so that's been really exciting. Mm -hmm. and, and Media, I, I want to hear a little bit about the more about the Maker Launch program. Uh, for, for people who don't know, maybe can you recap a couple months back about what the Maker Launch uh, launch was like, uh, you know, what, what program you're actually launching here and, and where along in the process you, you are right now in accepting applicants. So the Maker Launch program is a new entrepreneurial initiative in the Faculty of Engineering to support our students who are going through the path of entrepreneurship, help them scale up and grow their business. Uh, we actually closed our application deadline was two weeks ago and we will be announcing the first cohort end of March. And I'm, I'm really excited for this program because it fits perfectly in the whole entrepreneurial ecosystem. So we have things that ranges all the way from an idea stage all the way to you know traction and, and um, I guess scaling up. And to give you an example, we have the Simon Neme Summer Entrepreneurship School as an initial idea stage uh, level of training. But we also have the Launching Entrepreneur Competition, which is meant for startups that have generated traction and they're looking for extra money to help them scale up. And... Uh, I guess a major theme that we have is really commercialization of research and we're trying to build the entrepreneurial mindset in our graduate students to leverage the technologies that they're inventing and the, and the I guess, inventions that they're working on to help them solve many issues that you know exist locally or globally. And that was a major theme in many issues that we have, whether it is the graduate poster competition or whether it is some of our like, businesses and other initiatives that we have happening all the time the Faculty of Engineering. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's great to see the, the research that's uh, happening inside of a university uh, taken outside of it into the real world where it can make an impact. Uh, and and Polly is probably a very good example of that. And then another uh, program that you mentioned earlier was actually Enactus. Uh, so I'd love to hear a little bit about um, how Enactus uh, emphasizes uh, you, you know, social enterprise. People at home uh, maybe have heard of Enactus through The Grocer, which is uh, probably a well-known startup here in Ottawa, a hydroponic system developed uh, that came from Enactus. Uh, Holly, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the program and, and what it's trying to accomplish uh, in, in social enterprise? Absolutely. Um, so the main goal of Enactus is to encourage students to use the power of social enterprise and social programming to make a difference in a variety of issues that we see across Canada and across the world. Um, the way that we approach creating these businesses and programs is really starting with the needs. So in the case of Polly, um, the way that we formulated the whole idea was all centered around how can we address plastic waste in a sustainable way that will also hit a few other boxes that we like to check um, on the social side. So creating employment opportunities, creating economic development opportunities. Um, and that's kind of the basis for which we create a lot of our projects. And all of our projects are entirely student run. So it gives the students a really good opportunity to get their hands dirty um, and experiment and understand what it takes to run these enterprises in the real world. Um, and occasionally they do transition out into the real world like the grocer did. Um, so we're super happy to have seen that. Um, and we always wish success on our alumni. Um, so what's really important about this experience is that whether you launch a business um, like what happened with the co-founders of The Grocer, um, or you're just entering the workforce. Um, we really aim to give students a background knowledge in social enterprise and what they can do in their careers to help advance um, the spread of 
this kind of thinking um, and really transform business into something that isn't just generate or isn't just used to generate profits, but also generate positive social and uh, environmental opportunities. Mm -hmm. So uh, really uh, improving that education element, uh, not just through the, the, you know, the typical MBA, you go out with your business degree, uh, but actually understanding what you can do with that, what good you can do with that. So uh, a very noble cause for sure. And uh, I, know, I know Polly's a, a great example of that. So uh, Holly, thank you very much for taking the time to share with us what Polly is doing uh, in the communities across Canada uh, and media. Thank you very much for joining us and, and telling us a little bit about uh, Maker Launch and what's going on at the University of Ottawa to encourage entrepreneurialism. So uh, thank you both very much for joining us. And uh, before I let you go, I want to take a quick moment and thank some of our sponsors, without whom this show would not be possible. Uh, I want to start with Number Crunch, offering virtual CFO services to SaaS firms. There's TD Bank, offering specialized programs for tech firms. There's Pearlie Robertson, Helen McDougall, a leader in business and tech law. There's also Stratford Managers, offering services to help you scale up your tech ventures. There's KRP Properties, offering so much more than just space. And of course, we are here today in the University of Ottawa STEM building. Uh, the University of Ottawa Faculty of Engineering is creating the next generation of technical talent. Now, Techopia is not just this fantastic show. We are also available on obj.ca slash techopia with daily articles about Ottawa's tech scene. You can follow us at Techopia OTT on Facebook and Twitter for our social uh, feeds. And if you're watching us on YouTube, please leave a like, uh, a comment. We would love to hear from you and subscribe to see the next in our weekly episodic series for covering Ottawa's tech scene. Apart from that, I just want to thank you very much for joining us from the University of Ottawa today. Uh, we hope to see you next week for our next episode. We'll see you then.